All righty. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are doing well. We are at the halfway point here, the Chicago lunch hour. So take a moment, set your sandwich down and listen to my friend Bubba from Bubba Trade. First things first, Bubba, not to derail anything here, but you know, the whole idea overall with the seasonality trade seems to not be coming to fruition overall from your trading through this have you noticed that we have a uh, an odd amount of our vol in, in the market here from traditional or am i just not looking at the right data sets how, how are you feeling about the market volume right now uh I, I think the market volume sucks great i mean there's nothing going on this is this is about it this is about as tough as a market as i've seen you know i say i've never seen it before and then i have to think back but i'm going to say this is the toughest market i've seen in over 20 years okay with really? nothing going on there's no action there's no price movement there's no volatility you know yeah the vix is at 20 but there's no real volatility we're not seeing the participants and i think that's the key is really the lack of participation from the retail side of trade you know the commercials are going to trade all the time and i think the commercials have been trying to set themselves up into positions that you know they, i think they want to be long commodities and short markets Okay, I think that's I think we're gonna have big markets and commodities this year. And unfortunately, they don't have the 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 rookie player or the retail player to push around right now because the retail people are busted, they got no money because inflation is so ridiculously high. So I think we're seeing a real lack of volume, but I do think that you're gonna see as we move closer, like in the driving season in crude oil. You know, I, I have predicted, and again, I don't like to make big predictions, but I have predicted that there's gonna be a shortage of oil. Because, you know, we don't control our own, our own destiny. Saudi Arabia controls it. You don't think that they don't know that our driving season starts in May and that all of a sudden prices are going to go up and there'll be a shortage and there'll be a little squeeze on oil. So I, I think what you're seeing here is really a lack of overall retail participation right now because the retail trader is kind of busted because of their credit card debt and everything else they got going on. You know, I think that, that that's very important. Uh, was talking with Big earlier on those things about him being down at uh, Mardi Gras and joints of time. And people were spending and spending and going in the comments. Wait, do you think they're spending on savings or spending on credit? And I think they're spending on credit. I think a lot of people right now are writing a check that they're not 100% sure that they can cash coming through. But Bubba, am I wrong on that? Am I just being the old man on it? What, what do you think overall from some of this? Because you talk to some other individuals, you, you know, when you're going to Vegas and everything, do you see people really spending more on credit or do you think they're spending on savings? They're spending on credit. They don't have any savings. The 70% the, the yeah. of the Americans don't have $1,000 in the bank to be able to go to for an emergency. You know, you can never talk about numbers when it comes to credit card debt because obviously inflation numbers are higher than they were. But the one thing we can focus on is that we have never seen this many people at limit on their credit card. And you yeah. know that you can never pay that debt back, right? That is like, that is worse than a mortgage. You can, if you pay, if you don't pay the balance in full, the amount of interest you charge, it's almost called usury rates, right? Those are almost like, like a, 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 a a loan shark lending you money at 25%. You know, and, and it amazes me overall uh, uh, on how many people were given so much credit overall. See, I mean, traditionally, you had to have a good borrower overall to be allowed, heck, even $10,000, $15,000. Now you've got cards that are opening up at $5,000, et cetera. People are getting 10, 20, and 30,000 limits. But, you know, let's pivot a little bit away from that. How do you feel about the FOMC coming into it? But talk with the people in the group and overall, I think it's going to be a null event. I think a lot of it's priced into it. We'll get a couple jitters maybe for the first three to five minutes, but overall in, in its essence, I think it's going to be a null event. Are you talking about, today's, are you talking about today's minutes? Yep, today's minutes here in about uh, 20 um, minutes. I, I think it'll be, uh, there'll be some movement because the markets are thin. Uh, is it have any meaning? No, the Fed's raising rates. You, you can bet your ass they're going to continue to hike rates. That 10 years is going to get to 6%. You watch, just pay attention because this is what's going to happen. They are they are in the middle of, of busting out the middle class and that's the whole game behind this. You've now seen, you, know, you saw Meta the other day now starting to charge for certain things, right? They want you to have the blue check mark, so to speak. Well, that's because there's no competition. So the government, the, the, the administration has, has systematically wiped out business and competition that leaves the door wide open for the Federal Reserve to keep raising rates. And until I'm telling you, 10 years is going to get to 6%. Mortgages are going to be close to 10% before it's all said and done. 
All right. So speaking of raising rates uh, and that nature, uh, for those that are aware, there are a lot of cooling units out there in the world that utilize natural gas as part of their cooling apparatus overall. We're getting into the summer season and the UK and the rest of the world, the winter wasn't that bad, so they weren't burning it up. But I tell you what, I think it is going to be a warm, uh, a warm summer overall for things how are you feeling about nat gas we were talking with jay woods earlier on that and he's saying ung at the eight dollar level what are your thoughts overall well you know you look at nat gas and it's interesting because you're looking at gas today it's 210 okay but if you look out in the curve right if you, if you understand commodities they go out in expirations and they go, have can contango and backwardation if you go out to october and that gas it's trading at about 380 right now OK, so it's almost to double what we're trading here. I think that gas is probably, as we said last time we chatted, probably a buy somewhere down here if you're willing to hold and take some risk. However, remember, the one problem you do have is that backward HDN can take you. You have to be able to roll it forward and, and hold the money. But at the end of the day, look, we're, we're at really low prices. But, you know, the lack of burning natural gas has also caused a CO2 problem. Right. We don't have enough car. We don't have enough CO2. To, to do a lot of the packaging, make a shoot, making beers, making Pepsis, you know, all the other stuff, you know, CO2 goes in about 80% of what we do in packaging and, 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 and soft drinks. So the lack of burning natural gas has been that problem as well. And of course, we don't want to produce our own. We want to continue to buy from else as well. Well, so it, it just creates another problem down the road. I see, I see, I see. Uh, but I'm going to shift a little bit on you right there. As you were saying, uh, you know, we're buying a lot of that out. Something uh, I came across a report overall. It was an emerging markets report on India and several other countries that they are now buying our trash, our plastics, our, our secondaries, our tertiaries at alarming rates, two, three, four times during and pre-COVID events on there. Do you think there's an emerging markets trade coming to the markets maybe in two, three months overall. I mean, regardless of their politics on things, I mean, finding a trade is finding a trade. Do you think waste management or something like that may be a good play or am I a little off? Uh, you're with that? probably on target, uh, Creed. I don't really look at too much of emerging markets anymore. You know, I've, I've been burned enough times through the, because of the lack that they have to, the way they can report and do things. Yeah. Uh, look, I think there's probably a play there. I choose not to play that market. That's me. You know, I'm very comfortable right here in, in things that I know about and what I can trade right in front of me. But certainly, I'm sure there's value plays everywhere in, in case any market that gets really depressed or really beaten down. I mean, when Russia, Ukraine went to war a year ago, I tried to buy rubles. You couldn't, no, nobody would let you buy it. You and me both. I was going through. I was trying. You know, we bought New York bonds in the 70s. OK, when they were overpaying for them because New York was going broke. Well, we knew they weren't going broke. It was ridiculous. But again, I'm sure there's a value play there. I'm just at, at the stage of my life. I'm not ready to take that. I'm not willing to take that on anymore. I don't want to do that much work. I like it. I like it. Well, I want to be respectful of your time overall. So my last question for you on this one, Bubba, what's your diamond in the rough for the summer trade? What's, what's that one there that's just kind of a, you went, you know what? It looks kind of good. It's got a good pattern. You want a, you want a, future, in rough, in a future in equity? Future and equities? Future or in equity, which do you prefer? I give you one of one. I give you one of each. Uh, give me one of both. Give me one of both. I, I happen to like the grain markets right now. I think the grain markets are being suppressed. Okay, I think they're being pushed down, and I think that they're going to be. Uh, I think they're going to have a big market. I, I think that corn is going to see ten dollars. It's about six seventy right now. I think wheat's going to see over fifteen. I think beans are going to see over twenty. I think that, and, and my one, if you want a diamond in the rough stock, I'll give you one of two. They're both cheap plays. These are both gamble trades. They're considered penny stocks. AG, Alpha Golf, which is a majestic, first majestic silver. You know, I think silver is going to explode. And I think that's a great way to play it. And if you're a Bitcoin player, BitQ, Bravo India, Tango Quebec, it's five dollars and forty-four cents right now. It was as low as three twenty-seven, which right I bought a bunch there. But I think that if Bitcoin explodes, I think it will that's going to go back up into the 30s, 40s, and 50s. So th those are just two straight gamble plays, okay? They're, again, they're not technically so fundamentally sound. They're just, if the markets do what I think they're going to do, those are both going to benefit very well. I love it. I love it. Bubba, if people want to figure out more about how you're working with the markets, and maybe even if they want to turn in for that awesome Monday night call, uh, how can they get a hold of you? Email me at bubbit, bubbitrading.com or go to the website and email me from there. But get in touch with me. I'll answer your questions. You're welcome to come and visit and we'll answer all your questions and help you out. I love it. I love it. All right. With that being said, Bubba, we'll see you on the next one. And there you go. I love it.
All right, man. Thank you. Have a great day, Creed. I appreciate it, man.